Howdy, howdy. Howdy, motherfuckers. Oh. Motherfucker, fucker, 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 fuckers. <laughs> What's that wiggle about? <laughs> Welcome to... <laughs> oh, I don't know. Welcome to... Welcome. <laughs> Bunny with aliens. aliens. The alien comedy podcast where we probe weird alien shit to decide whether it really did involve aliens or whether the people involved were actually Barry Bullshitters. I've got Granville Moonwalker with me co-hosting, and I'm today's investigator-in-chief, Kevin the Grey. Beard. All right, Mooney. We're getting straight down and dirty today because we have a lot to get through. Our subject today, Stephanie Cohen, is from Bromley, South London. South London! So she... Is not too far from us, Mr. Moonwalker. No, she's not. At the time of which I researched this probe, she's in her 50s in this life. So here's what she's Stephanie looks like, just for context. <laughs> Stephanie, not Steffi guy. <laughs> so she, uh, don't know how to describe her. Uh, she's got some funky hair, though. Yeah, she's got multicoloured dreads. Yeah. But it's not... So the hair itself isn't coloured. I think there's just loads of bands and beads and some of it might be coloured, actually. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, I, I look at her and I think she's got a comforting presence. Could be like a cool granny. Hmm, yeah. That ain't scared to whoop your ass if you step <laughs> out of line. <laughs> By that glare she has on her face, yeah. she is whooping your ass <laughs> if you step out of line. She got fire in the belly. <laughs> So, in that picture... Yes? There is a picture in the background. Yes. Of uh, an alien. <laughs> there is, yes. Which I brushed over. The picture doesn't look too dissimilar to one of Huggins' pieces of work. It doesn't actually, does it? And I'll just add that we will upload this picture to our Instagram and to our Facebook group, Extraterrestrial Towers. Yeah. But so, as Moonwalker has just seen, Stephanie has drawn pictures of some of the things that she's seen. Oh, she's drawn that? Yep. And she's seen that? Yep. Is this female Huggins? Huggins mm. 2.0? <laughs> not quite, but we'll, we'll get into all Fuggins. this. <laughs> she's not a thug. No, but she's a female. Fuggins. Oh, Fuggins. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just take a closer look at Stephanie and an alien she's drawn before we really get going on this one. Again, this image will be on our Instagram and Extraterrestrial Towers. So we have another picture here, and it's... Is she on a... So Stephanie is sat down next to a TV monitor. It looks like she's in a studio, and she she's in a studio, isn't she? Ah... <laughs> uh, did she go on TV and tell her story? Ah! <laughs> How very <laughs> perceptive of you. So on this TV screen, we have a picture of what looks to be an alien. Is it either standing in a green doorway or lying on the grass with his hand up like he's waving? Hi. Or he's on a bed, single bed, green bed sheet. No pillows. Mm hmm. And he's only just fitting on that bed. I think the alien's got an aura. That's one powerful aura. But the image that she has drawn slash painted, that's a typical grey, right? Well. Well, is it? Isn't a typical grey quite short? We don't know how tall that is. Typical. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying the picture, oh, we the don't picture, know how tall yeah. it is. We don't know what the scale is. Oh, sure. Stephanie predicted in 2014 that Labour would win the British general election of 2015 because of Labour's close ties with the cat people of Canis Major. Canis Major is indeed a constellation and somewhat ironically Canis Major is Latin for greater dog. So that's cat people of the greater dog. Or has someone just messed up the translation, translation there? And it's actually greater than dogs. Because let's face it, cats are greater than dogs. Um, she generally has a 
50 chance of getting this right yeah. of whether Labour's going to win. <laughs> so if she got it wrong, was she going to say there was interference from someone? Uh, so I'll, I'll colour that <laughs> in a bit. So I have a mock-up of Cat Person here for you, though. Not by Stephanie. It is a mock-up of Cat Person. If you'd just like to check this out before I move on to that. <laughs> So I have two pictures here. One of them is brilliant. And actually, round of applause for that one. So first off, before we get to the brilliant one, we have a picture of, that's a painted picture of a cat person. Essentially, (laughs) (laughs) essentially it's a cat person. Um, It's a portrait and replaced with the human face is a human version of a cat face. It is quite literally 50-50, isn't it? If you combined a human and a cat, this is what you'd get. Pointy ears. Cat eyes. um, The nose is... Yeah. Half and half. Yeah, and same with the mouth. And long blonde hair. Yeah, long blonde hair (laughs) and a pink top. And beside that, we have a picture of Cat from Red Dwarf. (laughs) You absolute (laughs) legend. And for those of you that haven't seen Red Dwarf, uh, sort your life out and go and watch Red Dwarf. Hey, little fishy. I'm going to eat you. How am I looking? I'm looking nice. How am I looking now? I'm still looking nice. So I just love the way I'd walk into a room and spit and go, ah, wow. (laughs) I thought I'd go in hard to begin with. There is actually lots of literature out there on cat people but unfortunately it turned out that these cat people were liars because <laughs> obviously Labour lost that general election the Conservatives won a majority vote in 2015 I'm just going to say this story is straight up bonkers and never really softens up so I'm going to apologise in advance there's not really a narrative here I'm just going to hit you with the hard facts Stephanie didn't comment to my knowledge on the election outcome but would add that the cat people champion the poor and sick it turns out stephanie is a god to the cat people what (laughs) (laughs) my own story here what yeah is she so do cats i don't even know where the fuck i'm going with this (laughs) just accept it it's fine so cat people champion the poor and the sick yep so does that mean that they take pity, essentially, or look after the poor and the sick? I'm going to go with look after because it's nicer. Um, so, crazy cat ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the cats looking after them? Ooh, I think you might be on something there. I'm going to say it's a codependent relationship. Is she a crazy cat lady? Well, she's beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> Just you, wait. Oh my. Um, am I sick? <laughs> I get on well with cats. It, we've got a good balance on this show because you're a cat man and I'm a dog man. You're a fucking loser. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where that came from. So aggressive. <laughs> it was the cat people. <laughs> they, they support. I don't know why people don't like cats. Because they're selfish? No, they're not. They only come to you if they want something. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect. You just want to be used and abused, is what this really comes down to. Deep in your inner psyche, (laughs) you want to be abused. I don't like neediness, and dogs are too needy. No, they're friendly. There's a difference. No, no. Like, a cat will come over. Give you a and the snuggle. dog will chase after it. I don't and need then, you then. And then it will bugger off, and that's fine. A dog will just be there constantly wanting something. No, they Fuck. don't. Yeah, they They'll do. They'll do it at times, but not constantly. constantly. They spend most of their time sleeping. Bullshit. It's genuinely true. Bullshit. They spend like 18 hours a day asleep. Bullshit. Right, anyway, should they we just are take not a... lions. <laughs> and lions are cats. And they spend 20 hours of the day sleeping. They're only awake for four you wouldn't have a lion as a pet, though, would you? And yes, I even, would. You'd be dead. 
How cool would it be, though, to be killed? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Granville fucking Moonwalker. <laughs> oh. I'm never going to financially recover from this. I'd call my sanctuary Moonies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just take a step The backwards. lion tamer. <laughs> We're not getting away from it, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie had her first encounter with an alien, the Grey, in Negril, Jamaica, in 1986. She's writing an autobiography, but I couldn't find it, so I don't know anything more about that first encounter, unfortunately. <laughs> but I've actually found Stephanie on Facebook, and her about me is very interesting. <laughs> Stephanie explains wow. how she works and plays with her beloved cat people mum and grandmother, St. Catherine the Great of Alexandria. <laughs> Saint Where Catherine. is this coming from? Saint Catherine was a martyr <laughs> around the fourth century. Saint Catherine's husband is Stephanie's cat people grandfather and her er father. Depending upon which incarnation you look at, he's called Albert. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. Your head is spinning round and round. I don't. Where is this come? Oh my god! What is going on? I think this is the first time I've ever felt lost. <laughs> it's only going to get better. <laughs> Albert the cat. How does she yeah. work and play with her beloved cat mum and grandmother? Maybe she's got a ball of yarn. How do you work with And then with she does them? some knitting. I understand. <laughs> oh, you fucking bastard. <laughs> well played. Oh my god, this is madness. Madness. Albert is such a shit cat name as well. <laughs> Can you imagine calling your cat Albert. Oh. Well, come on, Albert, come over here, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Wow. This and the ah, oh, the fact that you've actually said that this isn't going to get any easier. <laughs> it's just literally just going. Oh, just you wait for the what's wall. coming. Wow. <laughs> Albert was a high-ranking officer in World no, War No, he One. wasn't. <laughs> yes, no, he, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Respect for that, Albert. Has she reenacted World War I with cats and given Albert... <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. ...a high-ranking officer's suit? Uh, Albert was also Pharaoh Seti in ancient Egypt. Respect for that, Albert. Seti was the son of Ramesses I and had the longest and deepest tomb are you in now, the Valley of the Kings. Are you now going to tell me that he was also Ramesses as well and he birthed himself? No! But it was Seti I and Ramesses II, aka Ramesses the Great, who are believed to have brought ancient Egypt to the height of its power. Stephanie has a strong bloodline. I mean, Egyptians love cats. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> Connections! I... <laughs> I'm gonna go out on the, the room. A really, and leave me to finish this by myself. <laughs> a really thin limb here. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if this is all true. <laughs> Every single word of it. I've just had this image. Imagine if all of these cat people move like the cat as well. <laughs> so Pharaoh says he comes in. Wow! How am I Egyptians looking? <laughs> Kicks the door down. <laughs> and in World War One, Albert's on the front line, spinning across the battlefield with the bullets are missing him. <laughs> Dodging He's bullets. in like a shiny suit and everyone else is all in there. <laughs> Camo and whatnot. So like, wow! See something like a, a reflection of the, like, of the light somewhere. <laughs> Goes to, goes to chase it and all the bullets miss him because he's started to chase it. <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> Throws it. It's actually a grenade. Kills like 20 enemies. So let's move on to Stephanie herself. Oh my god, this is madness. Stephanie herself <laughs> was Joan of Arc in a previous <laughs> Oh, 
refresh your memory, Joan of Arc. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> if it turns out that she has a brother that's a cat that was Jesus, <laughs> I'm leaving. Oh, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> anyway, so... Joan of Arc played a large role in France recovering itself from English domination after reportedly seeing saintly visions, including visions of St. Catherine. Connection. Hat. Thorin. Joan was ultimately (laughs) captured by French nobles in cahoots with the English and died by being burned at the stake on the 30th of May for 1431. At approximately 19 years of age, Stephanie still gets visions of this life now that must be horrid i'm i don't know if like i just actually i just don't know I, is she just reading a book on to be fair she must have read several books to come up with this this is famous people in the past and she's like i could just say that i'm that it's person. really elaborate but it kind of ties together do you reckon she has a room in her house which has Loads of pictures and stories, articles, everything on the wall. And then there's coloured rope <laughs> that goes between <laughs> each. She's got all like these different <laughs> ones. A serial like killer map out. Yeah. Trying to track down, except it's just... There's her in the middle. <laughs> and then it all goes on how they all link with cats as well. <laughs> she's like, someone's called Catherine. She's in. Albert, you can call a cat Albert. She's in. <laughs> So I'm just going to blitz through some other bits about her. Stephanie has had a few other past lives, including as Queen Cleopatra, Mary Antoinette, the last Queen of France before the French Revolution, which led towards Napoleon taking control, and Goddess Isis in ancient Egypt, one of Egypt's greatest goddesses, of course. I have a question. I hope it's an easy one. And this is no slight on Stephanie right what does she do <laughs> she fucking <laughs> did <laughs> okay I do have because, an idea but I can't tell you yet because in all these past lives yeah she is a queen yeah an empress mm-hmm. like Joan of Arc she's all these amazing people yeah and now she's having a lifetime off and Everyone needs a break. Uh, Hold on. (laughs) Hold on. If we find out that she has previously had eight different fucking lives, and this is her ninth, (laughs) I am getting up. Do you know what? I never thought to count. (laughs) I never thought to count them. How many did I say? Cleopatra, Mary Antoinette. Joan of Arc. Yes, Joan of Arc. Catherine... Obviously, Stephanie herself, that's six. That's all I can remember. I really should count. That never even occurred to me. Damn it. Maybe there's more. <laughs> Maybe she's on live number six. <laughs> well, she's at least number six that we know of currently. And yeah, you're quite right. They were all sort of people of worldwide importance mm-hmm. and fame. But then, to be fair, they some of them may have become famous after they died. Yeah, so that's not Stephanie's fault. There's... <laughs> I don't really want to say this, but I'm gonna. There's still hope for her yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what um, if she stops an alien invasion? Right, so... Stephanie... Maybe there's a cat-dog war going on that we don't know about, and she's... Uh, there is. We see it every day on the streets. <laughs> it's important. Stephanie... <laughs> has another cat person father called Saint Michael aka Jesus fuck right off (laughs) (laughs) Uh, that's not no no. oh my god that's actually written there (laughs) (sighs) I said brother so I'm not getting up and I'm not walking out I'm going to finish this through Mm -hmm. right so I'm not sure if Stephanie is saying her cat people father is actually Jesus. So we'll move on from that. Stephanie also communicates with other extraterrestrial races. One of which Stephanie has had communication with is the humanoid greys, as you know from the painting. 
Stephanie has a grey grandmother called Marina who can turn herself into a spider. There are more, but honestly, I'm so confused at this point that I simply can't explain any more of her family. How many grandmothers can you have? Oh, by the way, Alfred was actually Alfred the Great of England too, the Saxon King of Wessex who unified England in the 800s. If you had a family like this, what would you do? <laughs> Shaking your head. I I've blown your mind. Uh, you're, I, you're speechless. I am. Is this the same Alfred that fought Ragnar Lothbrok? Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what don't, don't you know? know? What I would do. And again, can I just point out? Yes. That every one of her relatives is great. <laughs> what she. Stephanie, what have you done lately? Stephanie the Great. <laughs> oh my... Stephanie... I don't, I don't know. Stephanie calls her group of alien being and reincarnated spirit people Team Spirit. And they have a UFO. <laughs> Fuck off! They're not like superheroes that go around. <laughs> Team Spirit visit oh. other planets once Stephanie's physical body is asleep. This happens in the spiritual body, you see. She dr- oh my god. She dreams this shit. She. Are they like the X Men? And they go off in uh, Blackbird. I have just included a drawing of the Team Spirit craft for you. <laughs> it's some of Stephanie's <clears throat> finest work. <laughs> it may be made in crayons. It looks like four stones. With the largest at the bottom and the smallest at the top. And they've literally been placed on top of each other. (laughs) The bottom one has two doors and two windows. There's three windows on the next one. And one large window on the one above that. And on the very top, there is nothing. It's a roof. The flames coming out of the bottom, I would say are all different colours. But you've got like six colours there. Um, Yellow, green, orange, purple, red, white, blue. And I'm going to ask you, as they are Team Spirit, are those colours a manifestation of their spirits? No, that's just the boosters to fly. Because on other planets and other worlds... Why would they be... Why are they different colours? Fashion. You seen her hair? I would like to think that it's their spirits. You think she ain't going to fly around something flamboyant? This is Stephanie frickin' Cohen, son. (laughs) <laughs> do they just go around, do they just fly around the planet or planets solving crimes are they crime fighters I mean she might but she does other things or, as well are they team rocket no they're not team rocket I, I probably need to get onto the next bit to, <laughs> before you ask more questions okay Stephanie you fucking bad shit Stephanie has explained that she has a particularly close friend of another alien species. Close friend, eh? This one is an octopus man called Ian. (laughs) (laughs) Who named him? His mum? Sally? (laughs) I I kind of expected aliens to have other names. Like for example, yeah. Something like that. And uh, she was particularly close with this one, right? Mm -hmm. Is that because he has eight and <laughs> well octopus men and cat people it turns out sneak into stephanie's room at night and she has sex with them the cat people are particularly highly charged sexually oh mm-hmm. is she married i did look into that and i couldn't find evidence of it, it because if she lives on her own why are they sneaking because they don't want to wake her oh that's bad that's worse <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so Stephanie is very open in that these creatures give her better orgasms than any man ever has or could. She's and therefore, not <laughs> Stephanie isn't even interested in having a human partner anymore. So Stephanie either spends her evenings banging aliens or adventuring the galaxies with them all in their UFO. Can you even imagine having sex with Ian? No. You've got a friend <laughs> called Ian. This tickles me. <laughs> 
Yes, I have. <laughs> I have lips. How about you? Yes, I have. Because <laughs> I was thinking octopus. <laughs> that threw me. Um, Ian hasn't got eight hands, so no. Ian the octopus. What drugs is she on? None. What mushrooms is she taking? None. There must be some kind of a hallucinogenic here. Nuh-uh. What was her childhood like? Did she take a knock on the head? Mm, I can't really tell you about her childhood. I say... I can I, tell you about her previous lives. I was about to say, I don't mean as in she had a bad upbringing. I mean, like... Yeah, maybe no, I get what you mean. And hit her head. Just the information isn't really there. Do you reckon she's just watched so much, like, hentai and weird porn? I was going to say, now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that turns yeah. her on. So she's got some weird fetishes. I came up with another thought at this point in that she, like, had quite a rough time with it with the people that she's been dating in life to the point that she's turned away from them and she's a little bit lonely. I'm not saying it's the case. Just I wondered that at this point in the story. And so she's come up with all these elaborate things to sort of almost keep people at arm's length. And be, I'm alright yeah. by myself. I've got these. And there's loads of cats. I've got Ian the Great Octopus. Well, she doesn't have cats so much as cat people. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and she literally has them. At some point between April and May 2018, Ms. Cohen popped up in the news again. Stephanie had been visited by a giant man from Jupiter called Johan. Stephanie was interviewed by a news shopper and told them that Jupiter is rising in the heavens. And I was snapping away and lo and behold, I got a visitation from a person. He doesn't actually talk to me at all. Stephanie explained that he is massive, bigger than a tree. And nobody else has seen this person. Obviously. Remember she sees people in her... Dreamlike in, state. Yeah. Her physical body goes to sleepies and then her real spirit. So she either daydreams or has real <laughs> vivid dreams. So Stephanie Stephanie <laughs> Stephanie elaborated by explaining that as Jupiter is such a big planet, it seems likely that this gentleman would be massive before clarifying that he isn't physical but is a spirit. Johan most frequently appears to Stephanie as she is playing her saxophone. It was in this article, actually, that I learned that Stephanie used to be a child protection worker. Have you seen The Golden Child of Eddie Murphy? I have. Sweet brother Numsi! <laughs> I, 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 I want the knife. Um, please... So she says that Jupiter is such a big planet, it seems likely. Mm hmm. Not that it is. It seems likely. That's very astute of you, good sir. She ain't seen shit. <laughs> this giant man. In The Golden Child. I. Ooh. She used to be a child protection yeah. worker. Yeah. So a really serious job. Yeah. A job you need qualifications for, obviously. Yeah. And you must hear a lot of horrific... That you do, yeah. Stories. Not necessarily stories, I mean, a lot of horrific yeah, details. Yeah, yeah. Did she crack? Yeah. But yeah I was just going to say that in The Golden Child, Eddie Murphy... <laughs> ...plays a social worker on the lookout for a child who has been abducted and possibly abused. As soon as I learnt Stephanie worked within a similar field, albeit with police or social care... I couldn't help but imagine Stephanie as an amalgamation of Eddie Murphy and the old man that helps Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Just shown Granville a picture of him. Oh, he's in something else as he's well. He's in a lot, actually. I think he's passed away, unfortunately. Oh, damn it. But he was awesome. Need to f I need to watch The Golden Child. I, that was literally, this is not even a joke. My favourite film as a child. Freaking loved it. It's generally renowned as one of like Eddie Murphy's bad films from his bad period when he started getting really nah. big and done loads of action films. But I loved it. I'd That's happily great. watch it. The Pepsi Can Dancing. Brilliant film. Stephanie travels the universe in her UFO in search of the golden child with her team spirit. That is my theory. So my theory was that 
this is madness. Like, madness. Mm -hmm. She must be drinking some homebrew. <laughs> Moonshine. <laughs> with some mushrooms or something. But now that you've added that social work a bit. Yeah. I feel it's taken a bit of a darker turn in mm -hmm. that maybe she has heard so many horrific things that maybe she just couldn't take it anymore and has snapped maybe something else happened in her personal life that has yeah, she just yeah. took it over the edge because she said she used to be a child protection worker yep. so it doesn't do that anymore I don't know that it would be looked upon well if you came out with all these yeah, that's true. Facts no, and continued no, in the profession. No. But Stephanie also added that UFOs are stocked in a park in Bromley. <coughs> that's Norman Park for our London listeners. <laughs> Stephanie explained that aliens are her family. All the creatures she sees are interlinked and they jet off most nights together to see the universe as we've established. So we're nearing our conclusion. This lady is the truth, is she not? She definitely believes what she's saying. I don't want to be disrespectful and just say she's off her fucking rocker. I've got you sympathy balls here, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. In terms of not the fact that I believe it, but the yeah. fact that her... But you believe she believes it. Yeah. Yeah. Her mind you. is literally just, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say fragmented, but broken. Well, not even broken, just... Yeah. It's, it could be a coping mechanism. Not to shoot myself in the foot, but a lot of people in high-pressure, stressful jobs do Break. sort of go down with stress. But this is some sort of extravagant case, isn't it? <laughs> I've never known of any colleague ever to... <laughs> I mean, maybe if, you, if you're if you're going to go yeah. down, <laughs> go with some yeah. buoyance. <laughs> Absolutely. Slide in sideways, screaming. Don't go nicely. I couldn't actually establish either why there were crafts in Bromley. Just, 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 they're just there. At this point, this is a really mild so issue. Are they just in the trees, hidden underground? Are, are they think? in plain sight? With some to special be fair, cloaking maybe they're device? in the spirit realm. Possible. Yeah. I have a bit of a coup de grace for you here. I know I've just gone forward to 2018, but this story has been like memento. It was all discombobulated and I'm Fucking piecing it together. great <laughs> film. <laughs> so I'm making out the narrative, which doesn't actually exist. It's just, it just is what it is. So in 2013, Stephanie was in the papers. When George Osborne was about to announce the national budget in the UK, Stephanie chimed in to inform that aliens were guiding the economy towards recovery. Stephanie has actually had open correspondence with our old friends, the reptilians, who are oh. highly skilled oh. in the fields of business and finance. <clears throat> so is she just talking to politicians? Are politicians reptilians, are you suggesting? <laughs> They're fucking snaky bastards. <laughs> Confirmed. You heard it here. <laughs> the reptilians, it turns out, are trying to help the economy. That's what they always say. Yeah, that's what they say. What they're actually Line their pocket own pockets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing this isn't the evil draconian reptilians, but it's the good ones who work together with the Insectoids and Mars Defense Force. The reptilians work on people's minds to guide them to make the right decisions. <laughs> Makes sense, right? The right decisions for them. Yeah. Invest in this company. Invest in this company. Company goes under. <laughs> <laughs> They've pocketed all the money from it. Ah, ah, ah. I do actually love how sometimes all these stories we've explored get intertwined and actually start to make a weird kind of sense. <laughs> like, this has been so bonkers that at this point, when it connects something, you're like, oh, okay, that could be true. <laughs> <laughs> so leading on from that, Stephanie went on to give a few more details about her life. Stephanie has a famous ex. You may have heard of him. In this life, he goes by the name Arson Wenger. <laughs> Who at the time managed no, no, Arsenal Football no. Club. So her ex. <laughs> uh, you... No way. So, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, wait whoa, for whoa, it. Whoa. I think you need to let me finish. Okay. <laughs> Wenger was heir to the French throne in the 1500s. Oh, here we go. 
There we go. <laughs> Back then, Wenger was highly intelligent but stubborn with no plan B. That's I mean, what she that, said. that sounds like Wenger. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a oh, guy. Stephanie explains that now, which remember was 2013, the aliens offer advice to Mr. Wenger, which included telling him to get rid of a lot of shitty players and to bring in better players. Absolute genius. So... She's uh, also an Arsenal fan that was yep. able to see the state we were in <laughs> in that time. Yeah, but nobody but ent- intellectually superior aliens could have come up with that, right? <laughs> the aliens all pa- also passed on that Mr. Wenger needed to let Steve Bold do his job, as Mr. Wenger likes to do everything, but isn't good at everything. So, she may be an Arsenal supporter as well. <laughs> That yeah. pretty much... I don't know what makes you think that. <laughs> ...mirrored everything that every single Arsenal supporter was saying at the time, us included. Mm-hmm. Or she just read it from the back of a paper. Maybe, but or, this lady... Sorry, go on. Well, would still read it from the back of a newspaper. But maybe it was uh, in her cat litter box. Stephanie is trying to offer advice in her own kind of way, isn't she? Like, she's offering advice to Wenger, to the economy. Mm-hmm. Do you think she's actually just really trying to help the world, but she's she's knowing that people aren't going to listen to her, so she's coming up with an extravagant story to sort of try and make people listen? And then she's thinking, even if they think I'm absolutely nuts, it would they make might sense. get the message, even in this their subconscious. Bonkers woman mm. is actually talking sense. I mean, that doesn't necessarily explain why she's Joan of Arc, but... <coughs> Was... So earlier on when I said I had a coup de gras, I thought that was it. Nope. We've discussed Stephanie quite a bit today, but there's something that I have to show you. Remember right at the start? <laughs> you noted that she looked... Yeah, on the TV show. <laughs> yeah, so Stephanie has appeared on This Morning, the British morning television show with oh, Philip Schofield Philip! and Polly Willoughby. Oh, I fucking love Polly Willoughby. I'm really starting to like This Morning. <laughs> they have covered so much more wacky things than I realised. Oh. <laughs> Stephanie explained that the weather had been bad leading up to her appearance because lots of aliens were travelling from other planets to Earth because they knew Stephanie was going to be on this morning. Bad weather, it turns out, is actually used to cover up alien ships. Anyhow, here is the video. Ooh. They're here now, mm-hmm. and the, one of the greatest things, one of the greatest revelations Go, Philip Schofield. It's the volume up. One of these beings to manifest themselves right behind me now. Why don't they show themselves? Um, because then they don't really, they're not into showing off their, their Good answer. very, um, Shy? This. quite reserved in themselves. Oh, so close. <clears throat> um, well, they have sex with you in a bus. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what I mean is they, I don't, love Philip. they don't show themselves to the world like that. They tend to deal on a personal level with individuals because they are, we all have guides our own guides and they are i was about to say she tends to look away quite a lot but then as soon as i was about to say it she just makes direct eye contact with both Mm -hmm. they would do that through your guides um or your guides would allow them to come through so that you can see them i mean if if these spirits are actually here i mean that'd be a very easy way to test that Mm. we could get even get the spirits to go into another room just outside the studio and tell us what's come back in and tell you what's in there and then you tell us Oh, oh, they're trying to tie her up here. Yeah. Um, go tell them to go into my dressing room right now and tell me what's in my briefcase. Oh, Philip, you <laughs> naughty boy. Oh, we found out what's in your briefcase, Philip. I'm, I'm trying to myself to uh, look it, look in, into a briefcase myself. Um, <laughs> Come on, Stephanie, I believe in you. Yeah. Give her a chance. Come on. Whoa. She's uh, closing her eyes and pretending like she's in some kind of trance state. Pretending? She's going to the spirit world with the cats. Okay, well... Hopefully she doesn't bang anyone this time. Everyone's just... They're waiting. I don't know, I just see the briefcase, but I'm not what actually... Is it? 
Uh, I've seen a briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> it's dark in colour with a silver strip. Gold. I've seen a briefcase. I'm not necessarily saying it. it's necessarily, but I'm I'm not actually going into the briefcase. I'll let you. You're allowed. You can. Go <laughs> I'm not actually. Um, I'm not saying it's I, your I briefcase, um, but later I'm on, seeing one. They will show that show that to me. I'm, so I'm not <laughs> claiming that I, I actually again again <laughs> with four or five. Proof was possible right here on the telly. I know. So words. close. I know, but I mean, I, I am psychic and I am me. <laughs> you can't claim that after. <sighs> uh, but I am psychic. <laughs> what's in my what's in my suitcase? <laughs> um, I can I see a suitcase. I can see a suitcase, but I can't go in. <laughs> I'm not I saying it's the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> that was a brilliant response from Philip. I give you permission. <laughs> Oh, she was ducking and diving all uh, over the place there. Honestly, I watched that whole interview. It's freaking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link it in the show notes. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, this morning are brilliant. They put a lot of their stuff on YouTube. So what are your thoughts on the truth you've just witnessed, Mr. Moonwalker? Well, the truth is she could see a briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> It might not necessarily have been Phillips. <laughs> I love the fact that he went, what colour? She just went, it's dark. And then looked at him and he was like, is it? And then she was like, well, I'm seeing a briefcase. <laughs> yeah. He's honestly, people need to give him more respect as a host. He really, <laughs> both of them are brilliant, aren't they? It might not necessarily be yours. Maybe, maybe they'll let me in later. Well, I give you permission. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's oh, that's amazing. On the internet, Stephanie isn't taken too seriously by the hardcore UFO community. I am not surprised. <laughs> I don't think we are either, to be fair. But we get serious when we need to. <laughs> we do! <laughs> Nimitz. Yeah, true. USS Nimitz. We Every covered, now and again. Yeah. So as we saw on the video, folks generally think that Stephanie is either not fully truthful or has some underlying condition, be it mental health, personality disorder, or physical, combined with a very active imagination. Persistent arousal disorder can make you feel like you're having sex whilst asleep, as Professor Chris French put across on that interview we've just seen on this morning later on. Uh. Just prior to that, Stephanie has been asked whether any aliens were present in the studio and had explained that her cat grandmother was sitting on the sofa doing her knitting. <coughs> Stephanie obviously insists that dreams are real events and are a friendly way of letting you know what you've been doing without scaring you. I do not. <laughs> well, okay, some of my dreams can be awesome. <laughs> Can't everyone? <laughs> some of them can be fucking horrific. Hashtag probe. So, <laughs> <laughs> never been probed in a dream or in real life. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know the truth. I would not like to live out some of my dreams. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask why now. <laughs> is there one in particular you're thinking of? I really hope there is. Yeah, I murdered someone. Oh, crazy. Two people. I thought you were going to be the victim. That's no. far worse. <laughs> Garden cheers. Bloody hell. Was it someone we know? It was my dad and Oh, for, you've mentioned that brother. before, yeah. haven't you? Damn, Neither son. of which I know. Yeah. That's some really deeply and it was emotional vivid. stuff that... Proper lucid, <laughs> I don't think this is the place to work through. ...dream. <laughs> and I actually woke up to sirens <laughs> <laughs> around... And, and I the thought they were coming the for me. <laughs> How old were you at this point? Mm, 21. Oh my. I think. Okay, I'm not going to ask any more questions there. But no, there was police cars going by outside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's get back to Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie also states that aliens are walking amongst us, but that not everyone can see them, obviously. Of all her arguments, that one is actually her best counter argument in a sense. There actually could be more dimensions than humans can detect, and it is plausible that creatures are looking at us from dimensions we can't even begin to imagine. But then I guess this begs the question of how can folk such as Stephanie see these other dimensions? Are they X-Men? What if she could? 
Yeah. But those aliens were just being dicks. They were like, yeah, we'll, we'll pop by and have a look. <laughs> and I just stand I by the door. And yeah, they literally just stand by. <laughs> We ain't, we ain't fucking going in there. The ones she's banging are actually just a bunch of random teenage aliens <laughs> that aren't all these reincarnated people. They've just bullshitted to her for a laugh. Uh, <laughs> suitcase is black. Uh, <laughs> there's a sil- something silver. I'm, I'm not opening it, though. I know what Philip's like. Hold on, this might not be Philip's. <laughs> <laughs> Could be anyone's. <laughs> Are you ready for me to summarise, or you got any points on that part? No, you can summarise. I, w- yeah. I was going to stop. So, as I've hinted at, that's it for today. We've had Stephanie Cohen, a psychic and alien experiencer who is visited by cat aliens, greys, octopus aliens, and reptilians. Stephanie... The whole alien spectrum. Pretty much. Near enough. Stephanie flies in her spaceship with these aliens at night whilst her physical body sleeps. Do you reckon the giant was a Nordic? He's a bloody big Nordic. I'm just... It was the only one I could think of that isn't on that list. Uh, to be fair, who am I to say that it's not? You're Kevin the Grey, motherfucker. Ah, <laughs> 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 shit. <laughs> Stephanie can see the aliens during the day, but most other people can't. Stephanie was... <laughs> many historical figures, such as Joan of Arc... Oh, uh, God, I, I, I'm going <laughs> to... No. Her alien family were also historically important figures, such as Albert the Great. Stephanie appeared on this morning, and when put to the test, unfortunately, couldn't use her psychic ability or her alien friends to tell her what was in Philip Schofield's satchel suitcase. They were dicking with her, that's why. Scientists think that she's either dreaming or has a condition which makes her believe what she's experiencing is real. Any final thoughts before we conclude on Stephanie, the alien sex psychic? This is just batshit. This has been Do you know what? possibly the craziest story we've covered. I think covered. it's top two, along with the brains, just because the brains are so unusual. I think this tops it. Yeah, this is probably crazier. That's what I mean it in terms have of the a single craziest... crazy, crazier element, but all combined, it's a more crazy story than yeah. that. Yeah, I'm with you. I have actually one more thought. She says that she's psychic. She's asking the aliens what's in the suitcase. That's not psychic. That's cheating. <laughs> I've just turned on her. Maybe she was asking for a chance to use her psychic abilities afterwards, but they had run out of uh, patience. I'm not seeing what's in the suitcase. (laughs) What the fuck was that accent? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It's Bromley. (laughs) That was mental. Are you saying that it was aliens? I... Please say yes. I'm back out on that really thin limb. <laughs> if this was aliens. What do you mean, if? This is the craziest. Like, they must just be fucking with her. I mean, who could even. Completely. Who could come up with this? It has to be true, right? This isn't aliens. Ah, this is not. Mother trucker. Aliens. I, I just want to know if she's dressing those cats up in a World War <laughs> One like, reenactment. Darn it. Cat War 1. Well, obviously, I'm not saying that it was aliens, but it was an interesting story. Interesting? <laughs> Hell yeah, it was. <laughs> this is batshit. I'm, at this point, still not genuinely entirely sure as to whether Stephanie truly believes all her abilities. She seems to believe when she's talking about aliens, but then when asked to tell what's in that case, she yeah, absolutely when folds, and it's she doesn't simply make an excuse straight away. She rabbits in the headlights. Tries to come up with different reasons as to why. Yeah. It's and that just that then. made me lean towards. And then she was like, her. "Fuck it, I'm just going to try this." Close her eyes yeah. and starts going. But that made me lean towards the her bullshitting rather than she believes in herself. Mm. And even to begin with, she's very um and ah uh, like. But I suppose that could 
be nerves. Mm. <laughs> I can't say I've sat in front of Philip Schofield and Holly Willoughby, so I don't know how I would react. I'd probably hum and err and... I don't think that I am a particularly erry person, personally. It would depend but on I would sit there about. quietly, I think, if I was nervous. And I'd probably really consider my answers being that I would potentially be on some form of television. I know for a fact that whatever I say afterwards, I would think of 50 things I could have said, which would have been a <laughs> yeah. hundred times better. <laughs> oh, like, God way. damn it, I should have said this. <laughs> like when a girl <laughs> comes up and asks for your number, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> why didn't I give the number? So that's today's file sealed up. I too think this is up there with the zaniest ones we have covered thus far on But It Was Aliens. Let us know what you think. We are on the Twitter. On the Twitter. At on the Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. At <laughs> But It Was Aliens. <laughs> you can email us with your suggestions too at butitwasaliens at gmail.com. I'm not going to repeat that. Rewind. Thank you. <laughs> Such a prick move. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but thank you so, so much. <laughs> Truly, thank you so much for listening. We started this up as a bit of a laugh, but to be honest, well, yeah, we were expecting like 10 listeners and 50 plays tops over the year, weren't we? Mm-hmm. I think we did. Was it the last episode we said that on, or was it this? I can't even remember. Uh, they, but they blend. We ended up somehow surpassing 10,000 just over six months in, which tells us that there are some bonkers people out there. And we love every <laughs> single one of you. <laughs> you guys and girls and other people are crazy. But again, yeah, thank you so, so much. We take the piss a lot, but we really do appreciate it. I don't know if our audience knows how much we really do appreciate this, though. Hmm. What are you thinking? I was about to say, how can I show that I really appreciate it? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't if doing that. If you'd like to hashtag probe <laughs> Granville. <laughs> you ain't probing me. Drop us an email. Or, no, in fact, <laughs> drop us a tweet. <laughs> and I'll read them out to Granville on the next episode. <laughs> Uh, you swine but yeah until next time have you ever looked up and wondered why there is a human figure floating towards a spaceship no but I would probably (laughs) wonder why there's a spaceship maybe you've just seen your neighbour float past your window don't be scared let us know and we will come and probe them because the truth is up there hashtag That wasn't the sound I was intending to make.